فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers and sisters welcome back to our Q&A Ramadan session with Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan the first question is does backbiting and tail bearing break the fast? Me and some brothers had a discussion over this and they used this hadith as an evidence. Abu Huraira reported that the Prophet wasallam said, If one does not eschew lies and false conduct, Allah, does n- Allah has no need that he should abstain from his food and drink. Narrated by Al-Bukhari. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Lahu alhamdul hasan والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Fasting is a form of worship It's an ibadah in which we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by withholding from everything that will cause our fasting to break from sunset to sunrise from sun sunrise sorry to sunset min tulu' al-fajr as-sadiq ila ghurub al-shams from sunrise which is fajr until maghrib which is sunset the withholding here is of two things that we hold from there's an imsak which is imsak hissi. It's a tangible thing that you have to hold f- away from. And there are also things which are imsak ma'anawi. The imsak which are hissi is that you have to stay away from is food, drinking, and sexual intercourse. Those three are tangible, physical things that you're told to withhold from. The second form of thing that you need to hold away hold from is imsak ma'anawi now it's not tangible but it's more spiritual it is staying away from speech which are prohibited um false testimony lying uh, backbiting tail bearing insulting and also speaking foul in foul language and also coming with al-jahl. And al-jahl in the hadith means الذي هو ضد الحلم. It's the opposite of forbearance. It's when the person actually loses his composure. Now all of those are imsak ma'anawi. They are things which you have to hold off and you stay away from not only in Ramadan but also outside Ramadan. As the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُتْ That whichever of you who believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment, say that which is good or be silent. Also the Prophet ﷺ specifically told us in Ramadan, وَإِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ صَوْمِ أَحَدِكُمْ فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَسْخَبْ فَإِنْ سَابَهُ أَحَدٌ أَوْ قَاتَلَهُ فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي then don't insult, don't use foul language, don't lose your composure, okay? And don't fight back. Rather, respond by saying, I am a fasting person. I don't want to indulge into your ignorance. The hadith that our beloved brothers have brought forward of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith Abu Huraira, مَنْ لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ وَالْجَهْلَ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ أَنْ يَدْعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ Imam Amir al-San'ari rahimahullah he commented on this. And he commented on this in his Subul al-Salam which is a Sharh of Bulugh al-Maram the second volume page 320. He says الحديث دليل this hadith is an evidence على تحريم الكذب والعمل به that you're lying you see uh, وَتَحْرِيمُ uh, And the prohibition from a person being dim-witted. السَّفِهِ عَلَى الصَّائِمِ The person who is fasting. 
وهما محرمان على غير الصائم أيضا and it is also prohibited from the one who is not fasting إلا أن التحريم في حقي آكد كتآكد التحريم الزنا من الشيخ والخيلاء من الفقير it is haram in regards to the person who is fasting outside Ramadan but is even more emphasized when Ramadan comes in just like an elderly person Zina is more emphasized for him not to come with it because there's no da'i, there's nothing calling to him, calling him to do it. And also a faqir, a poor person to be arrogant, there's nothing forcing him or her to be arrogant. So the person who is fasting to come with these things is emphasized more on, and that is why the Prophet said this, مَن لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورَ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ مَن لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ وَالْجَهَلَ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ أَنْ يَدْعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَ The reason why they are stated is not because they nullify your fasting. It's because the fact of Ramadan entering has made this more serious in terms of its prohibition. Anyone who's looking for his fasting to be complete, you have to come with the withholding of the two things that I mentioned. Imsak hisi and the imsak which is ma'nawi. Once you've come with those two, the imsak hisi being drinking and eating and having sexual intercourse, you stay away from that. And also trying to vomit deliberately. That falls under imsak hisi. Okay? And of course, women, menstruate, menses, and, and, and then and the nifas, the postnatal bleeding, all of that falls under muftirat, uh, which are hisi. And also the second one, which is the imsak which is things on what that are that are ma'nawi such as watching your mouth and making sure you observe your mouth your eyes your ears all of those are things that a person has to withhold from this hadith doesn't show in any way form or shape that it breaks your fast some people they miss understood the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what they said was that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ أَنْ يَدَّعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ and so they said this hadith اعتبار المفهوم they took a reverse understanding that Allah Tabarak Wa Ta'ala He requires the actions of His slaves and so with this hadith we say لا اعتبار لمفهومي this hadith it doesn't have a mafhum to them uh, to it. In other words, there's no reverse understanding that can be taken out of it, which is that Allah wa Taala requires the actions of His slave. Al Imam Ibn Qudama rahimahullah he transmitted an ijma that backbiting and tail bearing and actions speeches like that don't break your fasting. ولذلك he said الغيبة لا تفطر الصائم إجماعا فلا يصح حمل الحديث على ما يخالف الإجماع that backbiting does not break your fasting by consent so it is not correct to take that hadith and understand it as uh, opposite to the consent that's already there but it is amazing that Ibn Qudama brings the إجماع even though there, are, there is Al-Imam Al-Awza'i, Rahimahullah, Imam Ahl Sham, who had an understanding opposite to this ijma', which is that he said, يَبْطُلُ الصَّوْمَ بِالْغِيبَةِ وَيَجِبُ قَضَاؤُهُ That uh, backbiting, it breaks your fasting, nullifies your fasting, and it is obligatory for you to bring it back. But scholars, they looked at where he got that understanding from. And they said he didn't get the understanding from the hadith that our brothers have presented in the question. Rather, he used a hadith which is da'if that the Prophet Sallallahu is attributed to him that he said, خَمْسٌ يُفَطِّرْنَ الصائمة. Five things, they break the fasting of the one who is fasting. الْغِيبَةُ وَالنَّمِيمَةُ وَالْكَذِبُ وَالْقُبْلَةُ وَالْيَمِينُ الْفَاجِرَةِ so the pro- this hadith five things al ghibatu wal namimatu wal kadhibu wal qublatu wal yamin al fajirah 
This hadith is weak. It is weak. And the reason why its chain of narration is weak is because Zaylai in his kitab Nasbul Raya, he says, Rawahu ibn al fi al mawdu'at min hadith ambasa. Wa qala hadha hadith al mawdu'at. Wa qala ibn al Sa'id, who's in the chain, is a kadabun. The same Ibn Abi Hatim in his Ilal. He said, سألت أبي عن حديث رواه بقية عن محمد بن الحجاج عن ميسرة بن عبد ربه عن جابان عن أنس أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال خمس يفطرن الصائم فذكره فقال أبي إن هذا كذب وميسرة كان يفتعل الحديث So two individuals uh, all of the, sorry, two imams Ibn al-Jawzi رحمه الله and Ibn Abi Hatim who brings it from his father Abu Hatim al raziu so the hadith min haith al-sanad is weak. Also, annahu qabilu li ta'wil. Even if we accept that it's authentic, it can also be understood. It has an interpretation and explanation for it, which al-Imam al-Nawi tried to explain. Imam al-Nawi, rahimahullah, he says, al-hadith al la yuhtajju bihi. The hadith is batil, it can't be used as any evidence. Wa-ajaba anhu al-mawardiyu wal-mutawalli wa ghayruhuma bi anna al-murada بطلان الثواب لا نفس لا نفس الصومي. that نووي رحمه الله يسد حديث بعض الفستفول. but he said ما وردي المتولي and other than them have given an understanding that even if we say خمس يفطر نص إما it doesn't mean a الصوم نفسه it doesn't mean the fasting in and within itself is what's nullified rather what is nullified is the um, uh, what is nullified is the uh, reward that is in the uh, fasting. Naam. The second question is: My wife's menses finished, but she didn't purify. She, but she didn't purify herself due to deficiency of water, so she planned to delay it till Fajr. But due to errands, she was unable to purify herself until Salat al-Maghrib. Is her fasting correct? <coughs> okay, this question. It, it needs to be tackled from two different sides. One is connected to the fasting and one is connected to the prayer. So let's start with the one that is least uh, of the two, which is the fasting. As for her fasting, <coughs> after her menses comes to an end, um, what is correct is, after her menses comes to an end, what is correct is, there is no need to condition al ghusl for the fasting. We already tackled that before. Like ghusl is not a condition for the fasting. As for the hadith that says, the hadith of Abu Hurairah, man asbaha junuban fala yasumu, that the one who wakes up in a state of janaba, he shouldn't fast. This hadith is mansukh, is abrogated. With what? Hadith Aisha wa Umm Salama. It's abrogated on the hadith of Aisha and Umm Salama. رضي الله تعالى عنهما which they said أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يدركه الفجر وهو جنوب من أهله ثم يغتسل ويصوم that the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم فجر would, he would reach فجر whilst in a state of جنابة from his family I mean intercourse that he had with his wife ثم يغتسل ويصوم and then after that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he would shower and clean himself عليه الصلاة والسلام and he would, he would fast so if you haven't come with ghusl, okay, from the night before, okay, and fasting comes and hits you, then um, there's nothing upon you. You don't have to bring back that fasting, you, carry, you have to carry on fasting. Because there's the hadith that I narrated right now of Aisha and Umm Salam and Zin Sahihain, okay. Imam Muslim, he increased a wording, which is the hadith of Umm Salam which is wala yaqdi you don't have to pay back i mean he never used to pay back ali sallallahu alaihi so the person who falls into this situation doesn't have to pay back okay but what is more befitting is for an individual to make sure that they are in a state of purity that they should clean themselves and should look after their in order to be ready for allah tabaraka wa ta'ala allah says in the quran wala taqrabuhunna hatta yaturna fa idha tatahharna fa'tuhunna min haythu amarakumullah that the person when they 
clean themselves after the, the mince is finishes for the woman, she cleanses herself straight away. Okay? Uh, based on this ayah that her husband can't come close to her unless she, unless she cleans herself. So it's better that as soon as she comes off her menses, that she's clean straight away. Okay? And this, of course, shows kamal. It shows completeness. But her fasting is correct. Whether it's janaba for a male or female, or whether it is a menses for the woman, or even postnatal bleeding or any other bleeding. Now we come on to the other side, which is the issue pertaining to her salah. Salah being the best action there is after the shahadatan. After shahadatain, which is shahadu la ilaha illallah wa shahadu la muhammad rasulullah, the best action that a person come with is fas, uh, sorry, salah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, ayyu awwalu ma yuhasabu bihi al-abdu yawm al-qiyamati salah. Fa in salahat, salaha lahu sa'iru amalihi, wa in fasadat, fasada sa'iru amalihi. That the first thing a person will be counted for, accounted for in the day of judgment is their prayer. If your prayer makes it through and you're prosperous in your prayer, then every other action for you is prosperous. What in fasadat, and if you've become short and corrupt in your prayer, then verily all your other actions are corrupt. So the salah is a very powerful action. And what we know is that the action of the salah has a pre there's a prerequisite before it. That a person has to come which is a shart, a condition. And that is al-wudu and al-tahara. Purity is what's needed from you. If a person is unable to do it, and she, they're not able to come with wudu, they come with a tayammum. Now, this sister, if her situation was that she was unable in the sense where she had no water to do it, then this is a udur shar'i. The sharia has given her an excuse. But if it was because of her, uh, her you know, negligence, and because of the fact that she wasn't given it, it importance, then she's in a very serious situation, and she needs to fear Allah subhanahu wa taala. And this is a very common trend when it comes to women, that they finish finish their menses, and they sit about, salahs go by, and tahara hasn't been done yet. So when the menses is over. The woman should clean herself straight away. And she should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is very important. Um, knowledge is with Allah wa ta'ala. The third question is I'm a single sister from a very poor family background. I have a serious illness that permits for me not to observe Ramadan. And I cannot pay al fidya. So, what is the ruling regarding my affairs? Um, this sister, if her illness is a temporary illness, then she has to bring back that fasting by fasting another time. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ that whichever of you is ill or is upon a journey, uh, then you have to bring up other days to come. As for if the illness that she has is a chronic illness, it is a permanent illness, upon her is fidya. Fidya meaning she has to feed every single day. Miqdaru nisf sa'a. Nisf sa'a is what? One kilogram of daqiq one kilogram and if she's unable to and she hasn't got the ability to do so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran la yukallifu allahu nafsan illa wus'aha that Allah does not burden a soul more than that which it can more than that which it can bear also Allah says in another ayah so the person has to come with that which is in accordance to their ability. And if the sister is saying, I am a sister who is very poor and I have no financial ability to do that, then she's forgiven, inshallah ta'ala. But if she ever gets finance in her life, 
when she doesn't have it, if she dies without ever making money and without, uh, without ever having money, then لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. But if she ever gains this, uh, gains money, then this is what يبقى في ذمتها. It was in her, on her neck. If she makes money and she gets money, then she has to pay back those Ramadans that were missing from uh, from her. She has to pay back those Ramadan that are missing from her. Even if it's 20 years on the line and she makes money, this is a responsibility that is on her. It's on her shoulder. She has to pay back. But if she dies, then Allah Taala does not burden us a soul more than that which it can bear. والعلم عند الله إن شاء الله وستطبع بإذن الله الكريم سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله استغفرك وأتوب إليه